you and we're rolling what is up guys you're listening to a boy named sue that's mr sue to you aka phil gibson and i'm coming at you with a solo episode just me talking about stuff bitcoin obviously of course if you've been listening to the show for any duration of time but i'm gonna <clears throat> excuse me do my absolute best to articulate how I feel about the quote-unquote debate of Guy Swan versus Finn Armani, because, man, <laughs> it was painful. I was up until 1 a.m. watching this thing, and hands down, Guy won. He made his points, and it probably drew out for so long because – the main goal of the debate, the discussion, the parameters weren't really set from the get-go. And so both Vin and Guy spun off on semantics about technical bullshit that 99.99% of the audience didn't know what the fuck was going on. And I was yelling at the, at the fucking computer and I was typing in the chat and it was, it was a scene, man. It was a scene. Um, you should have seen me. It was, it was exhilarating as well. And I just kind of want to, I want to do my version of it with myself and whoever the hell wants to pay attention to what I have to say about it. Anyway, the d debate was hosted by Hotep Jesus. Really sweet guy. Really, you know, he's the Hotep Nation, man. It's, uh, it's, if you're buying into this libertarian, voluntarist, anarchy, just liberty embracing stuff, Hope that people are way up there. It's just another form of it. But don't conflate that. That B catch is just another form of Bitcoin. Oh, oh, got under my skin. Let's start there. That was basically Vin's main point. So go watch, like starting at like four minutes, Guy gives his explanation of essentially Bitcoin is here as a creation of sound money. And we have a, a monetary policy and an exclusive control of property rights in the digital, digital realm. I'll break that down. I have my fucking money and you can't steal it because it lives in the digital sphere. And I got the secret password in my head, the private key that allows me to exclusively push this value out into wherever the fuck I want in this push system that is completely decentralized because if it wasn't, then I would have to deal with the bullshit fiat universe that we all live in, okay? So we all bitch about banks and we bitch about the Federal Reserve and we bitch about just these arbitrary decisions that are made by central planners. And if you are on my level, you understand that central planning is bullshit. And this is why Bitcoin was created in the first place. There is a quote by Satoshi Nakamoto I'm going to pause this and find it real quick. Actually, no, I'm just going to spin it off real quick, real quack, quack, duck, real fast. So, I mean, from the get-go, even if it wasn't in the white paper, that's irrelevant because Satoshi was talking about this shit in the, in the relay chats because he understood the fundamental problem of having these, these third parties, these central point of failures, people, just normal people having to ask for permission to use their money to use this shit. I'm scrolling back in the, in the CryptoCon or the Telegram chat in the Satoshi Arunas, I found it. Quote from Satoshi Nakamoto, the root problem of the conventional currency is all the trust that's required to make it work. The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currencies is full of breaches of that trust. Now, that said, and all the other stuff that I said, this is why we have Bitcoin. And this is why it's important, because it stops the rich from getting rich and the, and the poor getting poorer. And there is true value in this. It's taken a while, but if people are dropping $500 million of their treasury, their entire treasury, into Bitcoin, and institutional investors like Paul Trader Jones... And, and fuck, do you like Ray Dalio's reconsidering it? Warren Buffett, I believe, put uh, his money like adjacently into GBTC. But people are taking this seriously. And I, 
I've had multiple, multiple conversations about this on the show. It's no joke. And the most important thing at the end of the day of what separates Bitcoin from anything else is the 21 million supply cap because Bitcoin is a digital phenomenon because never in the history of fucking ever was there finite digital scarcity. Now you can say, I'm going to go make my own coin and have the same thing that defeats the entire purpose because one is not decentralized. What keeps it decentralized is that Satoshi made it and then he fucked off later and everyone is just so hell bent on keeping this thing as sturdy and strong at the first layer, at the first layer, the Bitcoin blockchain, blockchain, time chain, start saying time chain people. And um, just the value of keeping it from changing only soft forking, not hard forking. If you hard fork, you've basically broken what you already had about Bitcoin. And the reason why you want to soft fork and make it backwards compatible and make these updates, because when you soft fork, you don't change the inherent structure that makes it so important, so vital. And that structure is the 21 million supply cap. That's why we are so conservative and so hell bent on preventing anything from fucking with that. Because if you fuck with that, you fucked with the money. And you might say that, oh, the two week uh, difficulty adjustment and the 21 million and just all these numbers, all these numbers are arbitrary. That's irrelevant at this point. It was irrelevant from the point that Bitcoin was created because it's set and done. And those are the shits that if you fucking change, you don't have Bitcoin anymore. And all of these just build building blocks to prevent the fucking up of the money of the 21 million supply cap. Because for once in our lifetimes, we have a deflationary asset. Because of that supply cap, no matter how much you have of that, your value will stay the same. Right now, it's going to inflate because Bitcoin, as I am starting to use and shield to boomers and just noobs is that imagine if you had gold and you had prime real estate and they had a baby that was digital and immortal that's bitcoin you have these assets that come together in the digital realm that fucked and had a baby that are super scarce and incredibly hard to produce now i mean if you just go with the digital gold meme, that's the perfect one to use because that's exactly what Bitcoin is if you think of it that way. And that's the reason gold was sound money. It was, it was, it took a lot of work to make. It was scarce and it held its value because of all the traits that we know that sound money has. Um, uh, it's scalable through time uh, through, uh, it's, it's durable, uh, verifiable, um, portable, just all, all, all these factors. I know I'm missing them. I know I, I fucked up the order. Sorry. I'm not breed love guys. I'm Phil. Like what, what are you going to do? Sorry. But that is the reason why over generations, you know, before like, like thousands of years before it was even money, people trusted in this good and they trusted it throughout time. And that is what built the value of it. Because unlike anything else that existed, they could trust that it was going to stay the same and stay sturdy and they could rely on it. And, and that's why people use gold today in the market as a safe haven asset. You may not be able to get rich off of it all the time, but you can definitely, you know, stay rich or not get poor. And, you know, similar with real estate, you know, you, you had this, somewhat finite landscape and they're not making any more land well if that's false you can build up you can fucking i don't know make a bomb in the ocean and or make a volcano go up you have air i i know that doesn't really that's not how it works but you get my point nowhere ever have we actually had this sort of scarcity and this is this is why gold failed as money because of the centralization of it governments got a hold of it and it was corruptible and they just start printing money and you have booms and busts in the economy. You have the financial crisis of 2008 and you have fucking this year, 2020, uh, 
Rona, okay? And the, I really wish that they made this point in the, in the debate because I guarantee, I will stereotype this, but I guarantee you that the vast majority of viewers of Hotep's channel are millennials. So they were either the millennials who graduated in 2008 and got fucked by the economy and felt disenfranchised and found Ron Paul and went down a rabbit hole or whatever, or they're the millennial of my generation. Oh, I mean the same generation, but the later millennial. I'm on that. I'm on that millennial Zoomer cusp. But they are waking up because of how fucked up in their adult lives that COVID has really been to the economy, and it's pushed them to question: well, How does this system? Th- <laughs> uh, play that back. That sounded funny. How does the system really work? how is money actually manipulated whether it's through interest rates or just printing more and you know why is it that we don't see inflation in typical goods and services um yeah at least immediately and you know why is it that the poor get poorer and the rich get richer well because that inflation goes into assets and all of this is like the manipulation of the federal reserve and just experts central planning and it just it spews corruption and this is exactly why Bitcoin was created. So I just feel like if they address those, you know, the financial crises of recent to the audience, they may have been able to connect with that because Vin and Guy did go down a rabbit hole of just techie stuff and people got lost and frustrated. <laughs> Me being guilty of that experience. But honestly, that is why Bitcoin is important. Because we actually have a chance of, if it's not sound money in a currency, which is debatable because we have lightning, and although lightning's faulty, you will have other second layer solutions like side chains and whatever shit that goes on. I'm not like a developer smarty pants dude. Uh, that's why you have great guys like Brian Gentry and fucking, uh, you know, Andrew Polstra, Ben Carman, whatever, people working on core. But regardless the solutions for having an actual great currency a peer-to-peer fast cash whatever the reason why you have that built on top of bitcoin and nothing else is because you trust in bitcoin you trust that the 21 million supply cap that creates sound money that will actually make everyone richer and not feel fucked you trust that is going to stay the same and it's a sturdy foundation and it's just like the osi model of the internet and the way that this is going to be planned out and growth from a growth perspective is like the internet. I mean, guy used this example in the debate, but um, you know, there's layer one of the OSI model, like just Google image it or learn about it, but you actually have the infrastructure of the internet. So you have like the pipes and the wires and it's hardware essentially. And then you have all these layers built on top of it, like protocols like TCP IP and all this. And then, you know, you eventually get to, I think layer seven is the last layer, the application layer, like fucking phone apps on like people that, that can interact with the internet in an easy way because all the technical bullshit, they didn't have to learn because it's abstracted away. And we just use the internet and email just naturally. It's intuitive. And that's essentially where Bitcoin is going to go. And we're starting to see that with Lightning and anything that's like, you know, Bcash or any coin that is trying to take themselves seriously and say that there's a better chance of success and stateless money uh, but without using BTC or Bitcoin as like the foundational layer, they're kidding themselves. They can't get there because Bitcoin is the only truly decentralized money. Okay, there's no single point of failure. There's no king. There's no president. There's no Roger Ver. There's no Vitalik that can arbitrarily make rules. And not saying that Roger Ver would, but the problem still remains that you had the central figure. Okay. And you have Vitalik and c- communicating with all the people involved in coding Ethereum and just making these changes and updates. And you have all these announcements about scaling and soon TM. No one fucking knows. And you can't, as Pierre Richard demonstrated months re- as, as a recent, that you cannot run the numbers and validate that there is a fixed fucking supply. Okay. I know that they're not trying to fix money, but sometimes the, the ETH heads, spin that off and they say oh well yeah ethereum is sound money it's like no dude it's not stop lying to yourself stop stop fucking up the narrative and oh (laughs) 
look, look, guys, the thing is, Bitcoin was created to fix the money. And you're kidding yourselves if anything else is going to do that. We already have stateless money. It is Bitcoin. It is, if it's not money, and it, I agree with Michael Saylor and others that say it's probably smart to start calling it an asset, which it is. And it's also a commodity to some extent. I mean, people use it as like utility on Lightning. Like they use it as collateral to actually do shit on Lightning, but they, it's also a utility for freedom. It, it is like the fact that it is a digital scarce bearer good that exists to prove its scarcity, like I talked about with Jesse Berger, the fact that that exists is enough to create so much utility. The fact that you can have this thing and actually send value across the world to anyone, or you can store your value in it and have it grow exponentially, you know, convert, you know, sell your fiat for Bitcoin, as Corey Clipson says of Swan. Um, which, by the way, if you haven't heard much of me, like in these solo kind of rip episodes or, um, I don't know, as much on, on Twitter, I've been busy with Swan Bitcoin stuff. So very forever thankful for them for taking me on, on the team and uh, doing customer support things and, uh, you know, editing, formatting, like show notes or whatever the hell. Um, yeah, it's, I've been busy with that, but like, it feels so good to like work for Bitcoin. <laughs> and, and that's kind of why my passion is just like oozing and spilling out of me right now. Uh, so I hope I've been able to be somewhat coherent in this rant. Um, you know, I, I, t- I took some, some down as well, I guess, if it, if it helps. But I mean, case in point is that <laughs> if both Vin and Guy believe in Austrian economics, then that's kind of like how this conversation can be settled. Because Austrian economics is human action and human intuition and making decisions that are rational for the individual. And the best way to do that is sound money. And if you hard fork and change the root of the protocol that will endanger the protocol security and endanger the supply cap, you don't have that. You have sound money to prevent financial disasters as we've seen. You get that with Bitcoin. Okay, because there's no Federal Reserve. There are no central planners fucking with it. So this is how true prosperity is reached. And this is why Bitcoin was created in the first place. And anyone who claims to be libertarian, even adjacent, this is what you should agree with. And if you agree with this, then I don't see how the most liquid digital asset in existence that has a sturdy, safe, trusted foundation or, you know, trust lists, um, trust minimized, you know, those terms get thrown around. But the protocol that requires the least amount of trust because it's truly decentralized, I don't see why you would dedicate your brains and passions and efforts and labor by dedicating your work into creating tools for freedom off of that protocol. It doesn't make sense. It, unless if you're like compromised in some way or just being intellectually dishonest, it doesn't make any sense. And I think a lot of this just the reason Bitcoiners are so passionate. And I think arguably this will be easier throughout time because of human action Bitcoin, as Parker Lewis says, is so unintuitive until it becomes intuitive because it makes sense. Because the reason that we surround ourselves, other than because of the force of government around the dollar, is like it's, yes, it was the network effect that we all could agree on. And it's the same but more true network effect of why the world agreed on gold for so long. Any other crypto is antithetical to this mission of freedom. And altcoiners might say that maximalists are toxic and they force others onto Bitcoin. But this is 100% false. The market has decided. The market has chosen Bitcoin. It's the one and only truly voluntary, immutable, unchangeable, anti-fragile 
free market system. Anyone who like wants to see in Kapistan or, you know, a nice libertarian society, anyone who believes that it's like, uh, it's here. Like it's not utopian, but it's, it's the place. It's, it's the future that we want that will actually bring prosperity. And it's fucking here guys. It's right before our eyes. It's happening and it's proving itself to continue to happen every single day, every transaction, every piece of value that gets stored on that time chain. Block by block, they keep coming. It is resilient. It's anti-fragile. It stands against attacks. You know, I'd like to see a government attack and just see, just see the victory after that. <laughs> you know, not asking for it like right now, but it's a black hole, man. Like it's going to suck all the fake value in the world into one because it's, it speaks truth and it's recorded truth and it's indisputable. And any other crypto that thinks it can achieve this and call itself money is kidding itself. And if you don't work on Bitcoin, if you work on another protocol, that's a derivative of Bitcoin or copy pasted code of like the Bitcoin code not working on Bitcoin. You're working in the crypto sphere. <laughs> sure, have fun. And I'm also not in the camp of saying that every single crypto project is a scam. But if you understand why Bitcoin was here, then you'll take the mission seriously that, that we need sound money. And even if you got in for number go up or you know the fiat side or even if you got in for the for the tech or you wanted to buy drugs or whatever you kind of stay for the freedom i would i would say and even if you don't get that i mean the fiat capital that you will make in a, a career that's freedom enough but i think people are starting to realize that you know bitcoin is no longer a get rich scheme it's a get free solution <laughs> and the problem one of the problems one of the many problems that i saw with this debate is that vin used the catholic church as a metaphor for bitcoin and that all the christian denominations forked off because the catholic church was essentially you know oppressive but here's my problem with that and I'm not a big Bible guy historian, but the problem with the Catholic Church was the separation of church and state. That separation was not present. You know, I was on Roland McFlugel's show and I had him on and just learning of how spiritual he could be with true Catholic principles before that corruption was there is something beautiful. It's akin to Bitcoin. It's, it's, it's beautiful in the same sense that the beauty and soundness of like one's soul can become as they learn more about Bitcoin and, you know, they get laughed at for thinking that for people saying um, or seeing that, you know, Bitcoin is their religion. It's kind of the same thing. Um, it's this individualistic embracement of uh, faith and spirituality that um, someone could use Bitcoin for. Uh, but the problem was if you listen to my chat with, Brian Harrington is that not I'm going to throw the, the J the J man around uh, Jesus basically created the decentralization of the church because before that you basically had to go ask for permission for the priests like he was a central third party and you know say his prayer or whatever like I guess confession or the confession booth or kind of that kind of deal and um, you know like son of God or whatever was the one that had this dagger to just cut through that bullshit. And uh, I don't know. But essentially, like, using the Catholic Church is a bad example because the Catholic Church was corrupted by the state and there was no separation of church and state. And what Bitcoin is, really, it's the polar opposite because Bitcoin is the separation of money and state. And there's no other cryptocurrency that can ever and will ever do that. There isn't. And so it was just unfair to use the Catholic Church as an example, uh, like comparing it to Bitcoin in that sense, because Catholic Church became centralized as all fuck. That's why people started to leave. 
And when it comes to the Bitcoin cash fork, the hard fork, it was the exact opposite. It was all the people that were running individual nodes saying like, no, we're going to have like segment 2x and I won't get into all the details because frankly, I don't know all of them off the top of my head. But it was the, it was a small minority of um, minor nodes that wanted to, that were compromised by all these other companies, whether it's like Bitmain or uh, uh, whatever, a bunch of other like outside fiat influence like companies, corporations were trying to bribe all these, uh, this minority of miners into, um, into going with uh, Segwit 2X. And essentially what that did was it threatened the layers of, of like the, the main rules of the protocol that maintain that 21 million hard cap. And that is why there was a user activated soft fork of everyone running nodes saying, fuck you, you're going to fuck up our Bitcoin. If you want to do that, go do that on something else. And so that's what happened. And so it's really the exact opposite of the Catholic church. So if that makes sense, it's like inverted in a way, but basically people that were on Bitcoin and believed in BTC other than BCH believed in the soundness of the money. And that is like the mission why they are there. And I mean, just look at the price and look at all the serious people like taking the shit seriously and trusting that they can put their entire life savings their entire net worth into this thing. And no one is doing that with Bcash or anything else. Like, I I really feel like I'm beating the dead horse here. But that is, uh, that's just the goddamn truth, man. That is what's happening. And so, yeah, if you want to have other crypto projects, fine. But you're not sound money. And if you think that your project is actually going to outpace Bitcoin and get to stateless money faster, then you're kidding yourself because there's, you know, a CEO of your project, essentially. It's not centralized. I mean, no, it is centralized. It's not decentralized. People are really having to trust, like, you know, one figure, really. And I'm sure there may have been, like, consensus in all the forks on top of Bcash or whatever the fuck's going on there. But the importance, the important aspect that guy was trying to make in this debate was that you can trust the software that you are running, using to run Bitcoin core on. And you can trust that, as Vin said, Bitcoin is the one that has the most talent and its gravity is, is pulling in the most resources, the most attention, because people, for whatever subjective reason, because yes, we are all Austrians here, I'm assuming, their subjective value, the market, voluntarily has chosen Bitcoin. And I don't really know where else to go from there. And there was a lot that Vin and, and Guy agreed on. And so I don't know what like Vin's goal, mission is, whatever. Um, I don't know. It'd be really cool if he was into Bitcoin. Because if anyone has been listening to my show for a good amount of time... He was the first guy I interviewed and sincerely asked him about Bitcoin and crypto. And I had him on to talk about the whole Libra coin. And he, you know, ironically here, explained that that stuff isn't really going to be a threat to Bitcoin. I I think that's basically what he said. But, you know, it's not Bitcoin because it's centralized, because they're going to try to control it. And you can try to not do that with any protocol that you might be working on, but it's also a fool's errand because you can't replicate the decentralization, the non like king head, CEO, president, the non-ness part of that that is on Bitcoin because Satoshi's gone, man. And uh, I don't know. It's, 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 it's really funny. It's, and all this talk about like tether and everything it wouldn't exist without bitcoin which i'm sure vin knows but look where the value is look look what is sucking up all the value of the world it's you know 
again, I'm sounding like a broken record here. But if you walk away with anything from this episode, the problem in the world is the state's corruption of money. And Bitcoin fixes that problem. And there's no central third party that can corrupt the money or become corrupted itself by printed incentives. And at the end of the day, if you want to fix the money with anything else other than Bitcoin, it's nothing better than the state. Period. Because essentially you end up doing the same thing. I mean, it's, it's increasing the block size is basically kicking the can down the road of, uh, you know, like trying to pass a bill or just, you know, inflate away the financial crisis just for a little longer until shit hits the fan. I mean, <laughs> chickens are going to come home to roost with that. And again, that's, that's why we have Bitcoin. <sighs> anyway, hope all that made sense. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is my show. My name's Phil, a.k.a. Uh, well, Phil Gibson, a.k.a. A Boy Named Sue. That's my Twitter handle. You can find me there. If you were compelled at all to invest in Bitcoin or buy Bitcoin, if you haven't already, if you're new to it, welcome. I welcome you. Would highly encourage you to check out Swan Bitcoin. So much awesome stuff is going on there. Trust me, I know. Seeing it every day. And we love to have you to save your savings. You can go to save, saving savings, I think. Is that the, wow, I fucked up my own domain. If you go to swanbitcoin.com slash fill, you can get 10 bucks worth of Bitcoin for free. And uh, just have your reoccurring purchasing of Bitcoin daily. You can have daily buys. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about price. Because, like I said earlier, with the deflationary currency, no matter how little you have, the value of that is only going to increase. So just think of all like all the you know people in charge wearing the pants that you hate and that aren't already doing this. Bitcoin is fucking money for a reason. It's protest money. You can, you can get magnitudes richer than they ever will be. You can get a head start before they do. Because odds are, you know, Bitcoin's probably going to be like a gazillion dollars or something by time the real real sovereign like nation state FOMO kicks in and you want to be ahead of that curve you do trust me so that's my spiel oh man mouth is dry <laughs> this was this was a very very uh spastic rip uh i will say so yeah, if you want to learn more, I made a website or websites. If you go to bop.one or uh, bitcoinonepager.com, uh, there are two variations of the same thing, but essentially what it is, is just like a quick like one webpage or webpage like guide of like what Bitcoin is. If you have any corrections or questions about it, you can hit me up and I'm more than happy to just have a chat. You can hit me up on Twitter DMs or Telegram. Telegram's the shit. That's kind of where I roam these days most of the time, but of course, Twitter, that too. Oh, goodness, it is. Oh, man. What a hump day, man. What a hump day. Um, anyway, I guess I digress there. Oh, go to etf615.com to learn how you can support my work because I'm a musician. I wrote a song called ETF or End the Fed. Uh, I'm passionate about rock and roll music and putting putting uh, e economic earworms into everyone's ear uh, for the sound money revolution. So basically I wrote a song about Bitcoin and uh, financial crises and just ending the fed and self sovereignty. It's a feel good song uh, about three and a half minutes. Uh, I'm proud of it. I like it. Hope you do too. If you want to support me, you can send Bitcoin or send Fiat as well. And if you got strike, like download that and just, you know, send, dirty fiat that way and it like converts into like bitcoin on my end uh so yeah shout out to jack mowers for doing that shit and that's pretty pretty much it but um for all those who stuck around to listen to this rant thanks a lot um thanks for the increase in like listenership recently just if i look at the stats but 
as Adam Curry says, no one really fucking knows because the analytics and just like tracking that shit, it's nearly impossible. But it, there has been a slight uptick uh, since the Rona drop. <laughs> so this entire year has been like, like a slow like build back up because I was doing pretty fucking solid for downloads until like the year 2020. So, you know, um, yeah, fuck COVID for that then, I guess. But um, thanks a lot for coming by make sure you rate and subscribe and review the podcast on apple podcast or wherever you can do that five stars preferably and a nice review all that shit really does help and like get me further up there in in the ranks uh just getting it uh, noticeable into people's faces and ear holes and share it share it with uh, friends family whatever share it um yeah that's what i do i'm i'm happy to say i'm like full-time bitcoin and just it was mine and the many others job to put this information and education out there into the world and make sure people understand the importance of sound money and the importance of just self-sovereignty again we this is the first time in history that we have this digital bearer asset that is truly yours and no one else's it's a piece of information in your head that you have the exclusive power to move wherever the hell you want in the world and i call that property rights it's exclusive ownership and can't be stolen from me unless if someone comes knocking on my door and threatens me with a barrel of a gun. And for that, sure, maybe I'll die a martyr for my Bitcoin, but I hope tyranny doesn't uh, come to that level because I guess that's when the government will try to 6102 or ban Bitcoin. And frankly, <laughs> if the government starts to ban Bitcoin, I think we've got a lot more shit to worry about before that ever happens. So those are my thoughts. This is my show. A boy named Sue. My name's Phil. And yeah, as always, own your failure because God knows our so-called leaders do not. But that's why we got Bitcoin. Peace out. Sayonara. Adios. Love ya. Toodles.